Welcome to the Fire Church Podcast. Today we pray Holy Spirit will speak through this message and into your life right where you are. Good morning, church. Um, If you guys have just come in, this is our next-gen takeover service. So welcome. Um, When I, I didn't plan on serving God in youth, honestly, when I, when I came to Fire Church and um, through a series, a se- I thought I was going to join the worship team because in my previous churches, that's where I serve God and or the outreach team. And um, I, I had a dream, actually. God told me in a dream and I was like, okay. <laughs> he has to tell me things in dreams because my, my, I've got a very busy mind. Um, and uh, anyway, when I started serving God um, in youth, God told me he wants to give them, their, this generation, their voice back. And um, so it's something that I'm really passionate about And the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so we are going to hear from four young people who have got the boldness of Jesus. And, you know, they love God. They they love God. They, they They love God and they are learning to reverence God. And that's one of the things that um, God is building into their lives is to have a reverential fear of God. And and that's not to say um, it's it's not abusive, it's not controlling, but it is, it's like, wow, God, we, we acknowledge that you truly are God, that you are holy, and that your word is the way that we choose to live our lives and we're not going to make you into another God. We are going to accept your loving instruction as a good father. So I just want to welcome up some amazing young people. Um, So so Arabella, um, Tiana, Justin, Guys, come come up, Justin and Adiel. Would you come, Adiel? Oh, there you are. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, come forward. So they are going to share with us what God has put on their hearts for today. So, we we receive from these beautiful young people. Hey, so let's open our hearts and just receive whatever the Lord wants to minister to our hearts. Hi, my name's Arabella. Now, before I start, I have to tell our pastors, I'm sorry, but your time is up. The youth has taken over. (laughs) Anyway, I'm here to talk about the miracle with my knee. So this began when I injured my knee at school. We were worried that I might have to have surgery if it was serious. Originally, the first doctor said it was fine, but I knew something wasn't, so we went to another doctor and got an MRI. However, the problem was was that I was in the school musical, so because of my knee, I couldn't do the dances that I'd been practicing since January. So one day after one of the rehearsals, I cried all the way home because I had to watch my friends do the dances that I was meant to be in and that I thought I had no chance of being in the musical. I was so upset I wanted to quit, but I didn't. When I got in the car, my mum was on the phone to Kirsten, so he prayed. Kirsten heard that my knee would be fine and it won't bother me again, and mum saw a lion, which reminded me that I have a painting that I did at youth with a lion and Revelation 5.5. 5. It says, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. And on top of this, the main character in the school musical is a lion. Later, the results showed that money was fine, but I needed physiotherapy. However, it still meant I couldn't dance. 
However, later I got knee tape that helped me walk and eventually I actually got to do all the dances that I was in in the end. <laughs> Is that a miracle or what? Good morning, church. And for those who don't already know me, my name is Tiana. And I'm here today to share with you all what God has placed on my heart. Now, a little bit about me. I'm a student in year 11, and reaching year 11 has been a huge achievement, but also a very big jump in my school years, especially from year 10 to year 11, as I didn't realize how different they actually are. And now this might not apply to everyone, but I'm not entirely a very organized person. But of course, I wish I was, especially for school. <clears throat> like, for example, with upcoming tests, exams, and assignment due dates that creep up. And this only leaves the levels of stress, anxiety, and overthinking to increase, leaving me questioning and allowing myself to let these feelings bottle up inside. So in fact, what I'm trying to say is whether you're a student like me, older or younger, in school or not, I feel on my heart that people need to be reminded to remind themselves that by placing these overwhelming feelings onto God and not relying on oneself, He will open the right doors for you. Whether it's people such as support like listening ears or advice givers, personal signs like holy confirmation, or simply a beautiful sense of peace. And I for one can confirm that God has placed, <coughs> sorry, God has opened doors for me especially that beautiful sense of peace. And he can do that for anyone and everyone who turns to him in these times, but only if you simply spend that quality time with him, dedicate time for him and pour yourself out to him. Because of course he is our father in heaven and on earth. Now a Bible verse that I'd like to finish up with is Matthew 11, 28 to 30, which is, then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy to bear, and the burdens that I give you is light. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Justin, and today I want to talk about God's Word in Matthew 24, 35. In this verse, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. This shows Jesus reassuring us of the truth in His teachings. This gives us hope, increasing our faith in our God that never changes. The world is changing all the time, and it's moving faster than we can keep up. It can be overwhelming, but with God, we can keep up. And it's a comfort to know that all that with all of this, it's nothing compared to Jesus. Even then, consider the significance of Jesus saying, even heaven will pass away. Heaven is seen as the most sacred place, yet Jesus places his words even above that. This shows that the word of Jesus is the highest authority. While heaven is a place we may long for, it's his word that guides us there. No matter what happens, the words of Jesus stands above heaven and earth. They offer us a place of comfort and guarantee that God's word is eternal truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi guys, my name's Adiel, and I'm just up here to share a testimony that happened last year. Um, so last year, as you probably, most of you know, um, I had a really bad neck injury and I was rushed off to hospital. There was, on the first scan, it showed cracks in my neck and I was worried I wouldn't be able to walk again. And that, that morning, you guys were all praying for me. <laughs> and I was taken into a CT scan and then an MRI. And those two scans came back with no cracks, nothing, no damage. And all the doctors were like, oh, wow, what's, what's happened? But I knew, obviously, it was God. Now, um, to finish off, I've got this verse, and it was, by He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our in, 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 sorry, in uniqueness. The parchment was brought us. Peace was on Him. And by His wounds, we were all healed. 
So yeah. Thank you. Wow. And was, isn't that amazing? By Jesus' wounds, we are healed. And that word wounds, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's talking about the wounds of our soul and our body. And um, Jesus is the lover of our souls. And today I felt like the Lord wanted me just to chat about our souls and what happens um, and what the Word of God says. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so when we get born again, I, when I was asking God what to share, he gave me two pictures, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. The first picture I got was this gold sports car. Like, I, I've never seen anything like it. It was spectacular. I wouldn't even have the words to describe it because I'm not into cars, so sorry. Sorry, people, but I would say it was probably an eight cylinder, I don't know if that's the highest cylinder um, car you get or whatever, when you open the bonnet and, um, you know, that's what happens when Jesus comes into our life. We become new creatures. Our spirit wakes up, our spirit comes alive to God and everything from God comes alive to us, whether it be the Word of God, whether it be nature. Um, and then I got another picture, and it was about uh, this skadonk of a car, all battered and um, bruised, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. And the Lord said to me, he said, Sometimes when we come to the Lord, you know, we've had our past life, we get baptized under the baptism waters, everything from our past life stays under that water and we come up and it represents the resurrection life. The Bible talks about how we died with Jesus and we were resurrected with him by the dunamis power of God. And, and so we are alive. Um, and then we start going through this process of sanctification that has to do with our souls. And Jesus made provision for our souls. So I just want to read uh, Hebrews 10 verse 14. It says, by one offering, he has perfected forever and completely cleansed those who are being sanctified, bringing each believer to spiritual completion and maturity. I read that from the Amplified Version. So it's talking about the process of sanctification. Um, and... Jesus made provision for our souls, for, or for the Bible talks about the atonement of our souls. And Jesus makes provision for that through his blood. That's why um, I think, you know, often you, if you watch other preachers and whatever, they'll be talking. I, I saw maybe a couple of months ago, Randy Clark talking about the importance of taking communion. And um, when, when Pastor Allen from ACC came to speak to our church, he said, he was, he was saying, it's silly if you think um, that you don't need to pray for forgiveness anymore once you're born again, because we're in a process and Jesus has made provision 
for us and with his blood, past, present, and future. But I can tell you now, with, when, when it comes to me, when I first came to Jesus, the first things that went, I, I was in a relationship with someone um, and we weren't married. And so the first thing that fell away was sex out of, out, out of marriage. That, that went. And then the smoking and the drinking and all of that went. And then you get closer to God and he's, he's like, I want to show you my ways. I want to show I want to share with you how I think. I want to share my thoughts with you. Um, my thoughts that when you feel down because you know you've done something wrong, like maybe, maybe it was um, making a judgment about someone that I didn't, I'd never met or, or whatever. And God says, actually, do you know what? This is how I see them. I don't see them the way people talk about them or whatever. I see them this way. And the, the closer we get to God, the more we get to hear what he thinks about people and what he's, what he's put inside people. And he wants us to call out the gold. Yeah? And our teenagers, they are literally in transformation. They are, they are the perfect example of transformation because their lives are literally transforming from children into adults in every way, shape, and form. The hormones are going wild. The brain is growing. You know, um, I remember when my son was a teenager and, um, you know, at the end of school term, you think, okay, we'll clean out the school bags. And, and it's like, and you literally need like a pig on your nose because, you know, there's the, the, there's the split banana that's oozed everywhere. There's the, there's the apple that's gone brown and squishy and whatever, and it could have, these things could have walked out their bags all by themselves. It was so bad. And if that was an analogy for some of the stuff that we are packing in our souls, I want to encourage you today that Jesus has made provision for it. And when I, when I sin, I made a pact with Jesus probably about 10 years ago. I said, do you know what, Lord? When, when I sin or when I'm in pain, I'm, I'm going to run to you first. You're the first one I'm going to run to because... Number one, you're the lover of my soul, but you're also the healer of my soul. And um, I'm just going to read. So our souls need to be cleansed, yeah, and purified. Because according to the Bible... It says that our wounds, the wounds of our soul, are caused by our sin and trauma. So if we look at Isaiah 30 verse 26, okay, As the, so in the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. Um, in the Amplified Translation, 
translation, it says, in the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people from their sin. Yep, so when we sin, we hurt ourselves. And Jesus has made provision by his blood. Yeah? So that's one thing that wounds our souls. Um, and then another thing that wounds our souls is trauma. And if we look at the, the book of Job in the Bible, he says 23 times, he says, I am vexed of soul. I, I am bitter of soul. Um, and it's because trauma wounds our soul. And King David, when in the Bible, when he killed Uzziah, when he arranged to have him killed, um, in Psalm 38, he explains the pain of his sin. In verse 3, in Psalm 38, verse 3, and Psalm 38, verse 5. I'll read that for you. I'll, um, so he's, he's heartbroken of, over what he's done, you know. And he says, it's, it's like us, you know, when we do something wrong, we feel bad. And then we come to the Lord and we say, we're sorry, Lord. The Bible says, um, oh, there we go. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. So he's acknowledging, he's saying, God, I, I feel terrible. I don't, I don't feel great about what I've done, you know, what I've said, if I've, if I've hurt anyone. And um, Jesus, he loves to walk us into healing. It is, it's actually his great delight. This is the only time we, we are in a, his incredible creation because we are the only creatures ever to be created that, get to, that God gets to walk us into health and wholeness. And he, and he, amongst all the sin, all the rubbish, all the, you know, the world just getting crazy. It, it literally is getting crazy. I, um, I was at a, you know, at a school and I was in the parking lot and a kid came up to me and he started barking at me. And I was like, and I, I, I wanted to laugh, but I thought, I thought, hang on, <laughs> I was shocked. I was quite shocked. I was like, what's this about? And he said, I'm a furry. And I said, okay. And he said, I'm, I identify as being a dog. And I was like, okay. And I introduced myself and um, said, Jesus loves you. And, but if... <laughs> You know, if, if that was my child, and I think this is going to be the South African coming out in me, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, you identify as a dog. Well, there's the kennel. <laughs> yep. Here's your food, some dog biscuits, and have a drink. Here's your water bowl. Um, but... Honestly, it's crazy. It is crazy. It is bat pew crazy out there. And <laughs> Jesus, Jesus has made provision for all of the craziness. He, he just, he loves people so much. He loves his creation so much. And the enemy really wants to get this generation because you guys, 
you guys are going to carry his glory like we, nothing we've ever seen. I, I believe that you guys are going to walk in the Moses anointing. I believe you are going to see crazy, crazy miracles. Um, because God wants to protect his people. And this is some of the stuff that you guys are going to get to walk in. Because you are chosen by him. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You're set apart by God. Um, sorry, I'm not excluding. This includes everyone. But I, am, I do want to encourage our young people. Because... What God has planned for you will be like nothing that it, we have ever seen on this earth in our day. I really believe that. Um, and I love the fact that you guys are experiencing for yourselves God's healing and how he's building your trust in him. Because we need to trust God. We are going to really need to trust God in the days ahead. And I, I say that, I, I don't say this to instill fear, but I do, I do say this to, for everyone to understand the level of relationship that he is calling us to walk in. Because... The glory of God is going to shine brightest in these days. And, and also, um, we are created to carry his glory. Yeah? And we are his glory carriers. And he is taking us from glory to glory and strength to strength. And... So be greatly encouraged that the cross is enough. It's not only enough, it's the answer. It's the answer. So if I've had lots of trauma in my life, um, and God has healed the wounds in my soul. He's literally brought, brought healing, and I, I do think that that forgiveness is key. So we, you know, I had to forgive, um, I had to forgive people some stuff. Like everyone, it's just part of life. We cannot avoid being hurt. And I actually think that God, in a funny way, it's, it's almost like, it's an invitation to draw close to him when we're in pain or when we, you know, when we, we aren't feeling 100%. Um, when I'm not feeling great, I have learned to draw near to God and I have also learned to give him a sacrifice of praise because he it actually, he loves it so much when we're going through stuff and we're like, it doesn't matter, Lord. I'm going to praise you anyway because I know that you are going to get me through this. And he does. He really does. Um, sorry, I'm going over. I just wanted to to say another provision that God has made for our soul, for the healing of our soul. Um, just one thing about the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus is enough to atone for all the generational sin in our family. It goes down from me right back to Adam. And, and for you, it is enough. And another thing... In Acts 10, 38, it says that Jesus went about healing all who were sick 
and um, with power, and that's talking about his dunamis power, and his dunamis power, his resurrection power. The blood attracts the glory, or his, the blood attracts his power, and when we pray for forgiveness of sins, his blood cleanses our souls, cleanses us completely, and his dunamis power goes from our spirit into our souls to bring healing and resurrection of dead things that he has in mind for all of us since the beginning of time. And the gospel is powerful. He is powerful. Anyway, so if you're in this room tonight, and this has resonated with you, Benny would like to share. So, okay there. Um, so basically, I'm doing the old call and one of my favorite verses is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And now, now Jesus is, if you feel it, just come up and come up to the altar. And yeah, so we've got the salvation prayer. Just so if you wanna give your heart to Jesus, repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Please forgive me as I receive you as my Lord and Saviour. Help me live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, if you would like to come forward for prayer, if you need healing, if you want the Lord to minister to your soul and bring freedom, He wants to. He wants to. It's His great joy and delight. So I want to invite any, anyone who would like prayer or to receive anything from the Lord, would you be bold and come to the front and the prayer, prayer team would love to pray for you.